Good evening. Uh, well, I'm back out in the shop. Finally got to where I can walk back in it again. I've been cleaning this thing up for about a week. Uh, it had gotten to the point uh, after I retired that uh, I started accumulating more and more tools uh, for working on my car and truck and uh, metal working and things like that. So uh, it actually got to the point where if I bought a can of spray paint, I had nowhere to put it. And I couldn't get to a place if I did have a spot for it. So I've been cleaning this place up, getting reorganized a little bit. Uh, it's still kind of crowded in here, but I can get around now and it's actually better than it's been in years. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, since I got my 766, my GL 766 lathe, I've done a lot of turning on it, but I uh, haven't really been doing a lot of videos. Uh, I apologize for that, but uh, now I need accessories built for this thing because I've never really built my uh, new accessories. All my other accessories went with with my other lathe. When I sold it, I sent all those accessories. Most of them wouldn't fit this one anyway. So uh, I've got to build a steady rest. I've got to build vacuum chucks. I've got to build uh, oh a new camera trolley for this thing. Uh, there's a lot of things you know that's different about this one than uh, about my other one. It's it's bigger and it just uh, you know, none of the other things will fit. So today, <clears throat> uh, I've been working on some jam chucks, and I was going to take you through that right quick and uh, explain to you what I what I use a jam chuck for is uh, like truing up tenons or removing tenons uh, off of bowls, vases, uh, generally bowls. I've got a, a vase mount that I actually kept because it does fit this lathe. Uh, but I'm still gonna build another one of those, probably probably build it out of steel, and I don't know. It just depends uh, on what I feel like when I, when I get started. The other one works great, it, uh, it's, it's still true, and everything works good on it, so I may not. Gotta build some soft touch centers, uh, live centers, and, and all of that. So anyway, I've, I've got to get back to really turn it. Now I've got my shop cleaned up. Uh, I've got to get back to doing some, some woodwork in here. But there's a couple other things that's happened. My, uh, when I was cleaning up, my dust collector that I built, uh, still working, by the way, up until yesterday. <laughs> I've, I've burned the motor up in it, so I'm going to have to find another motor. Uh, I used, if you remember, if you saw the video, uh, I started out with a table saw motor. It was a one horse table saw motor and I went to a uh, treadmill motor that I could adjust the speed and change the speed and all. Of and that worked, that worked really good for a year or more. But uh, it, it burned out and I really don't know why. I think the impeller's too big. so. I'm going to rethink the top portion of that deal. I'm going to get a new motor and probably build a new impeller and uh, a little bit smaller. I think it's just trying to move too much air because sometimes it does uh, pop the breaker in here after it's been running for a little while. But uh, I'm going to be doing that and my camera trolley. My, my camera trolley actually fell and this was it here or at least part of it it was uh it was a two before that i had re -sawn and uh i had a i had part of it down on the bottom like a like a t and uh it held up for a long time it was just it was up in the ceiling like that and my camera just rolled along it uh but the next one i'm going to build out of steel and uh I've already cast new wheels for it so that it can so that it can roll nice and smooth and uh, 
their own their own bearings, and I cast little uh, epoxy wheels with V grooves so it can roll along that track nice and smooth. But anyway, uh, let's get started on this jam chuck. Uh, this is really the first thing that I need. I've got some back here that uh, that I was using before, but the bowl that I want to to do, which will be in my next video, or actually it's a platter, be in my next video. But uh, none of those will work on it. They're just they're just too small, and I don't trust them. So I'm going to make a bigger jam chuck right now. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna start out. We're using this piece of poplar here. It's a uh, five quarter uh, or four quarter. I'm sorry. It's about almost nine inches wide. I was looking for something maybe even a little bit bigger than this, but uh, this is something I had on hand. It's good wood. It's good hardwood, and uh, it'll be easy to to work with. I, I love poplar, but. Uh, Anyway, just going to use one of my discs to get this thing to get a general circle drawn and uh, get it on the bandsaw. Get this thing cut cut up right quick. Well, let's leave that on there for a second. Let me get it back in position there. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead and punch a center in it so I'll when I get it on the lathe, I know where center is. And, uh, all right. There we go. And we'll take it over to the bandsaw. Sharpness and a bite of All right, let me get ready to get this on the screw chuck. All right, screw chuck. Good to go. Alright, I'm just going to have to change the belt speed right quick and uh, get this thing slowed down. I've been turning pins.
Still got some facing to do. Alright, I got all the flat spots off of here. I'm just going to touch this up back here. Get this. I'm going to turn the recess right here. As soon as I get this trued up, I'm going to turn the recess. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to go for a three inch recess. Uh, there recess about three sixteenths. You don't want it to be all the way into the bottom uh, of your chuck. Bring up the bottom pretty good there. Let's see what we got. Not quite square. Can't really see it very well. Alright. Now, I'm going to go one more pass. I'm not going to worry about all that in the middle. flat across the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm nice and true. Put them flat across the bottom. Alright, that's a good recess. Alright, we'll turn this thing around, get it off the screw, <coughs> and uh, get all this poplar dust off my lathe. Alright, now we're just going to true this up. Okay. True up the face, concave it slightly. It doesn't have to be much, but concave slightly and rounding this over some. Okay? Alright, let's get back busy. Couple of pull cuts right across the face. I'm not trying to get it flat either. So I'm trying to concave the, the inside just a touch and round over the outside. So really the only part I need to screw up is this right here. Now, you can see I've got this heartwood coming around and all this, and that, that'll create a little vibration in your tool, but I've still got some more to cut off right there. All right, once I get all that cut off, this will be true.
All right, got good cuts all the way around. All right, so I'm good to go there. Now I'm just going to concave a little bit, not much, and that'll. That'll just help me. right about here and this surface here is going to be contacting my bowl or my plate or whatever I decide to use against this jam chuck now I just want to kind of round this over a little bit right here so that uh, I'm not so I'm not trying to uh, get that sharp edge on there jam chuck folks now get my hot glue gun plugged up we'll move on to the next step okay all right now I've got this uh, cabinet liner and I put you behind the lathe for a reason you'll see here in a second but I bought this cabinet liner and it's gonna go and just cover this whole face okay I cut it one inch wider than the actual jam chuck is gonna is and now I'm just gonna glue it down so I'm just gonna glue down the corners is all I'm gonna do get a little spot of glue there stick it down whoo that's hot all right stick that one down roll it around get the other corner there and don't stick your finger actually in it Mm -hmm. All right, let's get the other corner. Make sure, make sure all the sides go around. Okay, so we'll do that. Good spot of glue there. Put that over without getting your fingers in it. And that glue will grab it and hold it really well. Okay, and we'll just do all four corners. This is all you have to do. Right. Okay, we now have a jam chuck. All right, let me bring you back around here. Now, now we have a jam chuck. 
Okay, I've got these other ones that I've made in the past. And I've used them. They, I mean, these were those were my other lathe, and they they still work great. Okay, so but anyway, that's uh, that's how I make these. They're really simple to make, but they really make truing up tenons and removing tenons very uh, a lot easier. And you don't have to actually make one for each bowl. I mean, if, if your bowl will fit here, then you're good to go. There's an old blank that I have. Matter of fact, it, it was from uh, March, uh, March the 8th, 2014. It's, it's old, and I think it's dry by now. All right, but the way this works is I pull my tailstock up. I'll go ahead and back it up some. Okay, pull my tail stock up. Always leave a divot. If you if you turn something green and you're gonna let it dry for a while, always leave a divot right there in the center so you can always get the center back. So I'll go up here, get it up against get it up against my jam chuck, center it up, and apply good pressure. Okay now and lock everything down make sure your lathe is always at its lowest speed when you start when you start turning there we go all right I'll put my safety glasses on and just give you a demonstration here all right lays at its very slowest speed i've practically got it stopped let it boot up. Alright, now as we start turning, this thing's going to get, you know, pretty wobbly, so I want it to go really slow. Alright. Now, so you can see how the drive actually works. Okay, now you could speed it up, but right now, what all I'm going to do with this. So I'm just going to true up the tenon so I can get it mounted in my chuck. True up the tenon, maybe true up the bottom, uh, but I don't really want to work outside of my jam chuck. I'll come around here and see how, see the jam chuck. You can see how that, how that works. It just, it's just a friction drive. It's just a friction drive, and. It works great. I've been using them for years, and it, it's great for like removing the tenon. When I finish this, when I finish this uh, platter here, I'm gonna mount it back on the chuck, back on the jam chuck, and that's how I'm gonna remove the tenon from it. Is uh, mounted on there. Well, all right. Well, that's uh, <sighs> that's how we build a jam chuck, and pretty much how to use it. All it is, it's just a friction drive device. That's all it is. But uh, I use them all the time for all different kinds of stuff. Uh, this one here was for a smaller bowl. Uh, for smaller bowls and things like that. Uh, one for my travel mugs. Uh, you can get those kits from like Woodcraft and just uh, any uh, lots of other places. But this is a good jam chuck for that. Once you get, uh, you put that in and it holds really well. And uh, this one I use for my for my wooden mugs and tankards. I use use it for that. I mean, and they're all used the same way. You just pull the tailstock up, and and it just creates friction between those two, and you can you can turn off your tenons. But uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, I've, like I said, I've got several. Uh, I've got several other projects that's going to be going on here. Uh, some are going to be made out of steel. Some are going to be made out of wood. Uh, just different things going on. Uh, mostly things for the lathe. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next project. See you down the road.